in the long week, ladies and gentlemen. So seriously, I ran out of operation this week. Very serious operation. Uh, seriously, it's been very sad. He had to have a new pacemaker, ladies and gentlemen. He's now got a little Kenyan that runs alongside him. Now. <laughs> My man bought his Christmas present this week. Give it to him early because my granddaddy loves a pint of Guinness. A pint of Guinness, he loves it. And for his Christmas present, my nan's bought him one of them big bristle loo brushes. But he can't get on with it, he's gone back to paper. And... <laughs> nice to see some ladies of life, we'll see you coming. No, but it's fun of them as well, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a bit of sad news of my nan as well. And, uh, it's been good, really, because if you think about it, there's an answer to the problem. Because what happened about three weeks ago, my nan's cat died, ladies and gentlemen. And, and this cat was really connected with my nan. Like, when my nan got up in the morning, the cat would come down the stairs with my nan and would sit on the settee while my nan was having her elevenses. And at lunchtime, when my nan went out to do the afternoon tea and lunch with my granny and my nan, the cat would join her, sitting right next to the table while she was having her food. Then in the afternoon, the cat would do the same, follow my nan everywhere, just to get a bit of scraps. And when she went to bed at night, the cat would climb onto the bed and keep my nan's feet warm in the cold weather. And three weeks ago, that cat died. And I had a stroke of genius. I thought, what am I going to do for my nan's birthday, which was this week? And what I did is I sent the cat away and had it made into indoor slippers. <laughs> and on my nan's birthday, I gave her the cat back as indoor slippers. <coughs> and she was reunited with the cat. Yesterday, my nan fell down the stairs. And she landed right on her feet. <laughs> You realise there's people going to be sitting there tomorrow afternoon and going, shit, I just got that, to be fair. <laughs> That's definitely too clever. But you probably turn off the accent, I do come from London. Are there any Londoners in the room? Yeah. Well, I come from a little fishing village in London called White Chappelle, it's quite nice here. <laughs> You'll know when you're in the right place because the seagulls in East London fly upside down because there's nothing worth shitting on, so you know where you are. I went over to my Asian neighbours the other day and as I walked in the door he's got a copy of the Koran on CD and I said to him, Burma's a copy of that, yeah, it's both these things. <laughs> and that's a nightmare, I have to be honest, because my neighbour used to make lovely curries. I mean, two weeks ago he had ginger in it and that's horrible because I love that cat. <laughs> And I've got problems with the neighbours the other side. I've got this German Shepherd next, next door and he keeps coming over and shitting on my lawn. And he's got this dog as well. <laughs> my neighbour the other side, he found up the police the other night. He said, can you send two police officers round? He said, what on earth for? He said, I've got two women fighting over me. He said, what do you want a police officer for? He said, well, it looks like the fat one's winning. <laughs> And it's nice to see we've got some kids down the front. I'm sorry about that. What's your name, young man? Sorry? Callum, nice to see you, Callum. How long are you, me, Austin? You had to think about that, then, Callum, didn't you? No, seriously, because I've had their problems, Callum. You know, I mean, I've got two kids of my own. And I've been on swimming duties this week, ladies and gentlemen. For those that have got kids, you'll understand this. And when you're on swimming duties, you take it week in, week out to take the kids swimming. Is that right, Callum? Do you go swimming? Yeah. I know, I know exactly what you go through. See, and I've had to learn this, Callum. And I'm sitting indoors on Wednesday, my day for swimming. And I said to my wife, I said, Marge, because that's my wife's nickname, Marge. That's because she's 80% fat. I said, Marge. I said, Tell me if Rabbit's on his way up, because that's my son's name, Rabbit. 
should have been Warren Barth's drunk at a christening. And I said, man. <laughs> she's on touch, she said, Rush, she said he's on his way. I said, good luck. I said, what about Tuesday? Because that's my daughter's name, Tuesday. Funny name for a kid. But when my wife was giving birth, I was watching her like that going, ooh, should we call it a day? <laughs> She said, she's about 100 foot behind Russ. I said, no problem. With that, the door goes. I said, come on, grab it. I said, it's five to four. Get yourself upstairs. Now, mums and dads amongst us, you know the routine. The kid goes upstairs. They put their costume on underneath their clothes. What happens then is you get in the car, you go to the locker room at the swimming pool. The kids go in, do their impression of Wonder Woman. Spin round, the clothes fall on the floor. You, as the adult, have to hang up the clothes before addressing your own costume needs. So Rabbit's walked in the door and said, come on, five to four, get your costume on. He said, Dad, he said, I need to talk to you first. I said, what's up? He said, privately. I said, no problems. I've gone up and said, what's up? He said, Dad, he said, I've had my first sexual education class today at school. He said, well, I'm a bit confused. He said, I really need to know the answer to a question. I said, son, I have to be honest, sex education, age 12, year 7, you understand? He said, yes, Dad. He said, I am totally confused, but I need to ask you. I need to sort it out, otherwise it will worry me when I go to bed. I said, no problems, Rabbit. I said, what's the question? He said, Dad. He said, what's a transsexual? I said, no. I said, son, go and ask your mum. He'll tell you. During the week, I come home during the week. I'll finish off this woman in a second. I come home during the week. She's at the top of the stairs, my woman. As I walk through the door, she said, Yes, Marge. She said, I have found books underneath Rabbit's bed. I said, What? She said, I have found books underneath Rabbit's bed. I said, So you should do. Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings? She said, No, dirty books. I said, Like what? She said, I have found books on bondage and sadomasochism. What do you want me to do about it? I said, well, it's no point giving a good idea, no, is it? <laughs> so, picture the scene. The kids are upstairs, the costumes on underneath the clothes. We come down, we get in the car, we're screaming, we're off to the swimming pool. We go through the swimming pool, into the locker room, the door goes, bang! Clothes go on the floor, the kids can't wait, can they? Open the door, they're straight out. <laughs> straight to the swimming pool. I now hang up the clothes, put on these speedos, Shut it, love. Got all these windows? You bungee smugglers? And set off for the swimming pool. There's not a parent in here that hasn't seen this one. As you open the door, the kids start. Come on, Dad, get in! But you don't want to do that, fellas, do you? You want to walk around giving it the large? With your speedos on, giving it the large. Yeah, you know, didn't you? See? And you want to have a look at the talent in this room, all the yummy mummies, a couple of milfs, a few gilfs, and you dip your tongue in the water, didn't you? All the time. Now you've got the shrinkage problem. And as I'm walking around in my speedos, where the lifeguard sits, he's starving, didn't he? Oi, oi! Yeah, you. I said, what's up? He went, you're bald. I went, what? He went, you're bald. I said, why? And he pointed at my trunks, and the incident fell off. Now, She said to me, you better clean that loft out. I said, don't worry, Marge, I'll do it. And I'm clearing the loft out. I found a copy of the TV Times from 1986. Or as they now call it, the Sex Offenders Register. <laughs> I'm telling you, she made me laugh the other night. I don't know how many of you women do this one. I'm sitting indoors. It's Friday night, last Friday. My woman said to me, she said, do you know what, Russ? I said, what's that, Marge? She said, I'm sick of going shopping during the day. She said, Tesco's is a nightmare. She said, you walk in there, she said, there's prams coming everywhere. She said, you've got these wheelchairs going there, electric wheelchairs going there. She said, you can't even get to the shelves. She said, it takes me two hours just to do a basket of shopping. She said, our Tesco's now 
He's open 24 hours a day, and I am going tonight at 11.30. There can't be anybody in there at 11.30. I said, well, what ever takes your fancy margin? If you want to go at 11.30, that'd be fine. 25 past 11, she's up. Right, I'm going to Tesco, so she's good on you. Door shut. Now, this is a result, because I've now got remote control. <laughs> for the first time that night in my house. So I'm going over the channels. <laughs> Babe station. <laughs> Result. Now this is something I've not seen before. For anybody that's not had the experience at Bait Station, please let me explain. This is where you have a scantily clad woman, approximately the age of 30, 24, 30, something of that sort, sitting on the screen. She has her front ribbons hanging out on screen. She has a phone number and she wants to talk to you. <laughs> Screensaver last week. Well, I say screensaver, it's clean film, it's alright. 